Hello, this is John Manson of Manson Fine Art, and I thank you for joining me today as I share with you a study that I did of Brewster from this reference photo using Jane Davenport pastel palette, and I used black Canson Metien pastel paper, and uh, Jane Davenport applicators, and Pan Pastel Black. These are the colors that I used from the Jane Davenport sets. If you like this video, please click on subscribe and the bell and a thumbs up. Thank you. Okay, I'm getting all set up. I have my pastel palettes lined up. I have my pan pastel paper, uh, my pastel paper. It's Cassin Mitian. It's black. This is a very smooth paper. It doesn't have the tooth of the other paper that I used when I did the flowers using the Jane Davenport pastels. Just trying to get it lined up perfectly so that you can see everything that I'm doing. I'll get those tools out of the way. And let me get my photo. I have a photo of Brewster in this particular pose on my telephone. And I'm going to be drawing his face freehand. Uh, if I needed to do it with absolute precision, I would have traced it. This is a study, not a final portrait. And I have done portraits of Brewster so often that I can practically draw him without a reference photo. Like my own dog, Renard, Brewster is my sister's dog, and we all live together. I'm using a General's white charcoal pencil. And you can start anywhere that you like. For some reason, when I do a dog, I like to start at the top of the head as opposed to the nose and the eyes. I like to get the shape of the head in, and then it's easier for me to place the nose and the eyes. And I can already see that that's a boo-boo. So I get my kneaded eraser and I erase that drawing line and I'll move down a little bit more. Now even though when you think about it, you the dog's nose appears in your mind to be round. It really isn't. It's angled. There's a flat top and angled sides. And then this is the dark area under the mouth. I'm trying to build in ch changes in the color and also where the fur folds and where there are folds in the skin and how the muscles lay on Brewster. As you can see, I don't have a grid. I'm working simply from the photograph on my phone. And he is such a sweetheart. And he is indeed a purebred blonde chihuahua, but he is chunky. Something that happened after he was spayed. Doesn't happen to all dogs. Didn't happen to my Renard, but it certainly did happen to little Boo Boo. But that doesn't stop him from getting around. He doesn't jump as well as he used to. But he can run down the street faster than a locomotive. Well, maybe not that fast.
And now I'm starting to apply the pan pastel. I'm using the color Whisper, which is almost a white. And it lays down very nicely. Um, certainly more easily in the first layers on this smooth paper than on the sanded paper that I used. And of course, I do have to add more and build it up for the color to stay on top of the black paper. I'm looking at his face and picking up all the areas where the white appears. And of course, it's not complete solid white. This whisper is almost a yellow white. And if I wanted a pure white, I would use the white from my pan pastel set or a pastel white chalk. I'm using a Jane Davenport baton applicator. These aren't really a bad price. I bought a box or a container, it's round of 20, that cost, I believe, about $8. And if you have them, you can just use cosmetic applicators and you can get those by the bag full of 50 or 100 for a small amount of money as well. The problem with those for me is that they're very short. They're about three or four inches long, and I have difficulty holding them with any comfort. <laughs> Just playing with um, the ring light that I have sitting there, trying to adjust the lighting better. I know that as we're looking at this, it seems so obvious that this just is not a correct rendering of Brewster's face. But as we build up the fur more and more, as I show more and more of the, the creases where the muscles and the fur move about, you'll see that indeed it is a good drawing of Brewster. And you'll look at it and say, oh, yes, if you know Brewster, that yes, indeed, that is Brewster. One thing that is difficult with these pastels is creating good contrast because the colors aren't strong. And at some points, I do use the pan pastel black to create, cre well, obviously the black areas, but to create some contrast crease and separation. These palette pastels were not created to do this kind of work. They're created for working on uh, smooth paper like this, but really for more fashion art, uh, fashion portraits. And she has a variety of pens and markers and stencils that you can use to start drawing fashion portraits. And as you can see, all the colors are fashion colors. 
So down the line, I don't know if she's going to go through there and discontinue some colors to keep it up to date with the current fashion. And indeed, it's not unheard of for an artist, particularly in printmaking, uh, to check out the latest fashions in, say, Vogue magazine, to pick out the color of the season to make their prints better appreciated by the purchasers. Now, it doesn't mean they're going to pick colors that don't go with the work that they're doing, but they want to, if they're looking, if they're looking at yellows or, or greens, lighter colors, they'll, you know, they can easily, anybody can easily look and see what's up, what's in style, because that's going to be drawing people's attention. This doesn't mean they all do that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I have known of artists who did that. And I will not mention names because I don't have it in written verification. But it seems to me to be perfectly viable. If you're trying to sell your artwork. And frequently when we sell prints, they are being sold as furniture. It's intended they, they go with the decoration of the room. That they work with the color palette of the room. Just adding some of the darker. What I refer to as a sienna. I have no idea what the colors are while I'm using them because I don't refer to the color charts. I'm looking at the colors and saying, oh, I'll try this. That might be nice. And that's how I'm working. But I am trying to maintain contour, I'm trying to maintain some level of contrast. And I am working in the direction of the fur. When you're doing an animal, you always want to work in the direction of the fur. You want the strokes from your applicator to be moving in the direction of the fur. If you're working with feathers, it's the same thing. You want the applicator to be working in the direction of the feathers. And when you do your pet, you do want to pay as close attention to their ears as to their nose. Or their mouth. It's a part of the face, it's interesting, and it adds a bit of realism and consistency, and continuity to the work. You want all of it to be in one style. All of this is in real time. It took me a little over a half an hour, including laying out the materials, to complete this study. And I call it a study because it really isn't a refined portrait. If I wish to at some later date, I can use this reference photo and this study to decide 
what colors I'm going to use in a fine portrait. Where I think I made some mistakes in the study and where I think I did a great job, and I, I want to try to duplicate that. Doing a study of the final piece is a, a good idea. I don't do it enough myself, but it's, but it's not unusual for me to start a piece, get all the way through it, and say, no, this is no good, and start it over again. And I could easily have done three or four portraits rather than just doing three or four quick studies. But the point is, in the end, that I've done a good portrait of the creature. Whether it's a dog or a cat or a bird or a fish or a squirrel, I do wish to do them justice. Now, as I blend down, these are such soft pastels that they do, they blend into each other very quickly, more quickly than the pan pastels do. working on building up the neck and adding a little chin. The guy's got a little chin there. That's my little boo-boo. His name is Brewster, but we call him boo-boo. Brewster is a rescue dog. My sister rescued him from a Seminole County, Florida kill shelter. Although they assured her that if nobody claimed him, he was going to go into foster care with somebody. They weren't going to let him be put down. And he was, I think, about 10 months old at the time of his adoption. I'm trying to incorporate various shades, and, and they're subtly different, but they blend into each other a little too quickly for my liking. So they're okay to use side by side, but when I try to overlay them, I'm, I'm starting to create light shades of mud. I'm going to start working on the eyeballs. Uh, that's just the black paper that's there. I'm going to be using the black pan pastel. And I'm trying to create light and dark so I can make them make the eyeballs look spherical.
Now I'm using the black pen pastel, building up from the center out, adding in the pupil and then blending in. And this is going to be a back and forth process while I try to work out the shading. Uh, it's a little bit more tedious in this medium than it is with the pan pastels or the regular pastels. Darkening up the nose and the and the mouth. Now he's starting to look like Brewster. He finally got to the point where his face is starting to look like Brewster. More work to do. But he is evolving. I'm working over the edge where I've just laid down the black and narrowing it down so it's just a light crease in the fur. And I'm going to do the same in the area of the forehead and around the eyes. As you can see, as I blend the whisper over the colors that are there below, it's not making it that much lighter, just a little bit lighter, and it is picking up the color beneath it. And I'm having that lighter color right along the edge of the darker color to create a contrast. And I know I'm sorry you can't see that I'm blending a green with the sienna color to make a brown. And then I'm going to have to bring in more black.
and back to the eyes. I do want them to appear to be more spherical than they look, and I'm going to add some reddish brown tones on top of the black. And some more of the black on top of that. Now to add, trying to add areas that have little reflections of light in them. Now really I've gotten to the point where the pastel just lays on top of the pastel on the paper. It really isn't being held the way I want it to be held at this point. Now as I said, the colors are lovely and, and the material itself is beautifully soft, but it just takes too much to build it up. Now, of course, this isn't true if you're working on white, smooth paper. But I like using colored paper. I really like working on black paper. I like the way you can use the colored background to incorporate it into the work that you're doing. And after I was finished with this, I sprayed it with a Sen pastel fixative and holds it beautifully. Now I'm going to try to use the general white charcoal pencil, but I find that the layers of the pastel are too thick and 
the charcoal pencil isn't taking. Just not pleased with that at all. I can do a few stray hairs, but I'm not doing well in working the hair back over the ear. So I reached for my polychromos white from Faber Castell. It's a colored pencil, not a pastel pencil. And while that wasn't quite as strong as I would have liked it, it was much stronger than the charcoal pencil. And I was better able to see the fine hair that I wanted to create. I'm going to work on the nose now. I just wanted to enlarge it so I could see the highlighting better. Unless he's back lit, there's no reason for the nose to be completely black. I have done so many dog noses that I can do these without looking at a reference photo. Using the black charcoal to add a little bit of fine detailing, the dark areas around the eye and on the snout. Take a quick look for comparison. And we're going to sign our drawing. That would be me. <laughs> that way. It's a very good study. As I said, this is not a final drawing or painting. It's something that I will use down the line to complete a better piece. Thank you so much for joining me for this real-time tutorial on creating a study of Brewster. If you'd like to see more of my videos, please click on subscribe and ring the bell for reminders. And if you like this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Thank you again. Have a great day.